Good evening. Thank you, John. I, I also want to thank Michael for introducing me earlier as an industry veteran. And I will be coming here eventually. I think he meant. But that, I thought that was thoughtful of him. <laughs> I'm here tonight to talk about my friend Ethel. Producer, casting director, Emmy winner, member of the Television Academy Hall of Fame, and now the first resident of the new Fran and Ray Stark Villa. <sighs> I first met Ethel in 1946 in New York. I was just starting out. She was working for my agent, and we became friends. In the years that followed, Ethel went on to work in television on shows like Playhouse 90, Perry Mason, and The Twilight Zone. Although we didn't see each other often, we, remi we remained friends, always picking up a conversation right where we left it, even after years had passed since our last meeting. And then one day, in 1969, she uh, insisted that two young producers see me for a small role in a sitcom. The men were uh, Jim Brooks and, and uh, Alan Burns, and the show was The Mary Tyler Moore Show. I didn't know that she had anything to do with this until about 10 years ago when she mentioned it to me. I thought I did it all by myself. <laughs> and uh, I just found out tonight she did another one. Uh, she apparently cast me in uh, The Migrants that I had done many years later. But again, I thought I had done that by myself. But she, so she was behind the scenes all this time like my fairy godmother. Uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show was a wonderful experience, but my personal life was pretty hectic at the time. I had five kids with full schedules and a new house with 18 workmen, and everything was pulling me every which way. And it seemed as if I was always running behind. But Ethel always stood up for me at a time when single mothers weren't that commonplace. And that's one of the magical things about Ethel. She has a presence that always makes you feel safe. You know everything will be all right when she's around. Or even when you don't know she's around, you know she's somewhere watching. And by the way, even though people would tease me about being late, Mary Tyler Moore reminded me years later that it was Ed Asner. He isn't here tonight. He was really the one who held things up. And she said, she just, they just gave me a later time to arrive. <laughs> just wanted to set the record straight on that. Listing Ethel's credits would take uh, the rest of the night, but we're going to a few little things here. She was the first female television executive, worked for CBS, the Children's Television Workshop, and on all of Lee Rich's and Norman Lear's television shows, and on and on, and on and on and on. And just in the last few years alone, she worked on John Frankenheimer's films and consulted on the live television production of Fail Safe, directed by Stephen Frears. Ethel Winant has had an amazing career. She worked with almost everyone, every famous name in the past 50 years, from Paul Newman to Mary Tyler Moore to William Paley himself. You could try to sum it all up by saying that Ethel Winant was a pioneering woman in television. But that wouldn't be right because you don't need the word woman. Ethel Winant was a pioneer in television, period. Tonight, as the Motion Picture and Television Fund celebrates its 80th anniversary, Ethel continues to pioneer as she becomes the first official resident of the Fran and Ray Stark Villa. And in a way, it's fitting because as the MPTF's motto is taking care of our own, it's good and right and correct that we now can help someone who took such care of many of us. <laughs> Ethel, this looks like a pretty good place from which to continue your career. And maybe before tonight, before I leave, I can pick out a room for myself. Uh, we wanted to give you a little something to commemorate this, this moment. 
Up, sir. Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. Where is it? I wonder. I oh. Well, it's here. This could be the key to our hearts. It, it is, but, but you could use it to get in and out somewhere. And I'm going to come and give it to you right now. I love you, Ethel, with all my heart. So do we all. So that I can't speak, and that's lucky for a lot of people because <laughs> they've heard me speak too much. I thank you, John. Thank you, Clarence. Okay. Uh, I I've been the luckiest of people because I've been allowed to spend my life in a business that I love so much, and I have worked with the greatest people, the greatest artists, the actors who have been so unbelievably devoted. The people, as we say, below the line. I've always wanted to be below the line with all those marvelous people who helped me make the shows that I loved so much. And I am so grateful. And then when I fell upon hard times, or things that scared me to death, again, my friends came forward, the people, you, all of you, and the thought that I will be able to live out my life with the people I love so much and care so much about in this beautiful villa is, is just beyond belief. I am the luckiest person in the world, and I want to say thank you to every one of you here because you've made it possible for me to have the best of lives. And, and I just try so hard to make it up to you in the years to come. Thank you.